Hi, welcome to Learn and Flutter. And in this section, Flutter Basics, we're going to be doing part three, which is on stateful widgets. In our previous video, part two, we look at stateless widgets. So let's just remind ourselves the difference between stateless and stateful widgets, even though we're not going to be talking about stateful widgets, but kind of do a review of what we said before might help us when we, as we get into the material. So we said that stateless widgets know how to render themselves. And this is going to be true of all widgets. State widgets have all the information they need for rendering or displaying themselves, right? So you can give them the information they need at construction. And we see this before. We're able to give a text widget information of the text it's supposed to display. This is before the widget renders itself. We give it that information. However, they do not update their UI representation if the information they have changes. And we're going to see that today. Stateful widgets, on the other hand, does everything that a stateless widget does, which means it knows to render itself. It has information that knows how, that helps it and, you know, how it should present itself, which is how big it should be, what it should display, all this other good stuff. But if some of that information changes, it can update its representation of the UI, which means it can re-render itself. Okay. And so that's the exception and the difference between stateless versus stateful widgets. All right. So let's jump into the code and we're going to see how to write a state full widget. And then we'll come back and look at a sort of an illustration to get an idea of what's sort of happening. So here I am in my code editor. And if we look, we see a part three directory, which I'm going to remove. I'm saying remove minus RF part three. Well, maybe I should just move it to the side for, I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, so let's move that to part three backup or something like that. So it so happens that oh, this is the second time I'm going to be recording this video because I recorded it the first time. And then when I went to edit the recording, I lost that recording. So I have to do it over again. How did I create this part three directory? Now in part two, what I said was we went into part one directory and I can do that for part two. And we did flutter clean and that helped us remove, um, you know, built artifacts. And for example, that build directory that was pretty big. And then we copied, you know, so we copied part two directory. We did a recursive copy of part two directory and we call it part three. Well, that's what we could do. The reason I don't want to do that this time is because when we run our application, it's still going to say part one. That's because all the configuration references the fact that the name of the application is part one. So for now, I'll just do flutter, uh, flutter, create and create part three. That's how I'm going to create a part. And I'm going to say, no, do not correct anything. And so this should create a part three project for me. And when I run it, it should say part three instead of still saying part one. That's probably a little bit confusing if you install it on your device. Not to mention, if we keep installing the same application with the same name, it's just going to overwrite what we had before. So now we can see the into this directory. And what I'll do is I'll start Visual Studio Code in the parent directory, actually. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to have access to, like I said, some of the code that I wrote before. But don't worry, I'll go through everything that I've done. And so we'll go from there. As before, we will start off by removing everything that we have in this main.dart file. And I'll simply delete this main.dart file. And so. All right, that's fine. And um, that's some stuff that I was working on before. And so let's go up to part two, which is our previous example code in which we wrote a stateless widget. And if you remember, we had a stateless widget here called my text, and it was in um, this file, and this is what it looked like. And so let's copy both of these, the directory and this file, I'll say copy. And I'll close project two and I'll come here and I'll paste it. So now this is exactly the same project that we had in part two. The only difference is now that if I run it and so on, it's going to say part three, but it's the exact same code and everything. 
If you look in main, what do we have? We have our main entry point for our application. We have this run app function that we call from the Flutter SDK, and we give it a widget. And if you remember, run app takes a widget as our application, just one widget. And that becomes like the root of our application. And we'll see what we mean by the root of our application. And then from there, we can build out. Once this widget builds out, it says, oh, I use, as a, I use a column widget for my representation. And we know column widget have children. And the column widget says, oh, my children are these my text widget that we wrote. And then, of course, my text widget uses a text widget as for, for its implementation. So just widget upon widget upon widgets. And then at the root of it, well, we don't know or care what the text widget uses, but eventually this party finishes and then Flutter knows how to render our application. What do I want to do? So since I don't want us to be bouncing back and forth between main.dart and this text file, what I'll do is I'll copy our widget and I'll actually delete this widget directory because I don't want us while we're learning how to write a stateful widget that we have to be bouncing back and forth. So I paste that widget that we created or stateless widget right here, just below here. And of course, we don't really need this anymore. So we can actually get rid of this line. There's nothing to import. And so I haven't broken my application. But while I'm doing this, let me just start up my simulator. And I'm going to use the iOS simulator. And that should appear there in a few. And so let's now look at what we have. So we went over this already. We know exactly how this works. And so we have a child widget. And what I'm going to do is instead I will scroll up here and I'll say, no, I want to change this into a stateful widget. But before I do that, let me implement something else. So what I'll do is I'll go here and create a new folder. I'll call it block. And then in this block directory, I will create a new file and I'll call it counter underscore block that DRT. Now, if you were watching this video, I assume that all oh, you joined me for all the other previous videos. And so you saw my set of videos on how to implement a block and what a block is. So now I want to write a counter block. Now, a counter block is not going to do anything fancy other than emit a new value, increase in value every second. So that's what it is. So if you register for the counter block, every second you're going to get a new value that's incremented by one. And so it triggers itself and it spits out this value once you subscribe. So let me implement that. Now, this is why I want to keep this around. I was going to copy the counter block code and just reuse it, but I'll go through the implementation yet again. So I actually don't actually need this because I'm not going to reuse anything from there, but let me start implementing. Don't worry. Remember, all the code is in GitHub. You have a link for it in the description. Just literally pause the video, go find the code in this section and this part, and you can see all the code that I will eventually write. So I want to int to represent the current count value. I'm going to use a constructor and have that initialize count to be equals to zero. Now, we know that out we want this to be a stream. So for example, one way of doing thing is to say get count and have this return the current count. So that's one way we'll be incrementing the count somehow. Let's don't think about it. And then we want this to the user to be able to call get count. Well, since we want the user to be able to have a stream of value, what we want this to be is a stream parameterize on int and return a stream of count. Now, let's assume that we have something called count stream that we can return. This is going to be a variable that represents stream int. Okay. Now, we know when we implement in a block and we want to deal with stream, we usually have a stream controller. So we have a stream controller. Let's call it count stream controller. And in my constructor, I will initialize my Kong stream controller and we'll do stream controller. And because I want multiple, if you remember, a stream controller only allow a single subscription, but I don't know how many listeners might want to subscribe. So I'll use a broadcast um, stream instead. And this will allow multiple subscribers. And as you can see, there are some other parameters I can pass here, like 
the on listen which gets called when the first subscriber subscribes to my stream that way i can start producing numbers only when i have at least one subscriber and the on cancel when there are no more subscribers i can stop so for that i'm going to use them to say on listen call a start function and on cancel call a stop function i don't really care about the uh, real time or in sync or whatever that um, other parameter is and so now i just need some function to deal with start and stop so there's my start function and there's my stop function now when there are no um subscribers listening to my stream i should stop producing numbers so i should be able to say whether my stream is running or not so i'll put that as that and then i'll say running um, by default is equals to false and then if for some reason my street stream is running and everyone stopped listening all my subscriber i want to set running equals to false again so that means the stream is not running okay all right so once i say start however i want my stream to start running so running should be equals to true and how exactly do i get um, new values to be emitted off of the stream so now that we have a stream controller we know that our stream controller controls a stream and basically it has the boat and it has the stream and the sync so the sync is where you input data and it comes out the other end of the stream so i could say stream controller my Kong stream controller that stream so this is the stream that is controlled by the stream controller and you can see um, but here I, need, I should parameterize it and I should say int and once I do that then I can see that oh, this is a stream controller parameterized on int I mean I can also do this but I don't think it's sort of necessary um, so that's fine okay so now I'm returning a stream parameterized on int but on the other end of the stream, I need to be able to add values. So it seems like what I want is something that is like a while loop that's so while true, so that's forever basically. So while true, what I want to be able to do is count stream controller that add count. It's the current count. And before I add the current count, what I want to do is say count plus plus. So I want to increment my count and then add it to the stream but if i did this this is just going to sit here in a while loop nothing else is going to get to run remember dart is a single threaded language and so i'll be just spitting out thing one of the other too fast and i said i want to do every second so what allowed me to do something every second well um i can use future that delay and so if i do future that delay and now i can choose how long I want to delay. So let's do this and delay. Remember future takes a function to act on, right? So it's the duration to delay and the function that you should call for the computation. And so duration, and that is gonna be second, every second, seconds, uh, seconds and one second. And then I want to do that. Okay, so if we look, we'll see that our delay take a duration followed by a function that returns, that does some work and returns a type. So this is a future. So what am I going to do? What is it that I'm returning? Well, after um, I finish putting something out on the stream, I return what the current value of running is, right? And so essentially what I'm returning is well, this is, needs to be a function, so I have to do that. So if essentially what I'm returning is a Boolean value. And you see that's a future Boolean. And so I can do a then or a wait, but this is only gonna do it one time. So when, my, when the first listener um, connects to my channel, to my stream, this will call start only once. This is gonna set run into true, delay one second, and then call you know this value to spit it out well actually what i think i want to do is whenever this is called so before i actually increment and add a value i should check and see if running is true or uh, if running is not true then i want to just return um 
you know, running or I could return false, right? Um, so either way, one works. But basically, if at the beginning of the executor, there's function, if my running is not um, true, then I don't want to actually do a count and add it to the stream because that would be incorrect implementation, which means that nobody's listening and still I try to put out the value. But at least I think this is a lot better. And because it's a single threaded application, once this function is invoked and I do this test, that nothing else will run and change it. But it is possible that before it's invoked, um, I could have been able, you know, like after start is called, it was set true. And then before this future is called, it could, the value of running could have changed. All right. So now that's doing, but this is only going to happen once. So I want something that's going to happen repeatedly. Remember, every second I want this to happen. So what I want then is to use future that do well. And future that do well, let's read what it does. Future that do well perform an operation repeatedly until it, the operation returns false. Well, that seems exactly like our operation here should be a future. So I want do well, and it takes a function returning a future, right? Um, a future on a Boolean, but that's exactly what this is. This is return a future based on a Boolean being resolved later. And so this is exactly what I want. So I was want to do a function here as the parameter. And I can say return. So this function returns the result of this guy. So I move this into here. All right. So now my do while is going to execute this function. This function returns a value. Now remember, do while is going to keep calling um, whatever this code is so long as it returns true. But since it's calling a future that is delayed by one second, I don't have to worry about it calling repeatedly. And since this future, when it runs, returns a Boolean value based on whether um, running a set true or false. If it's running a set false, because it returns and resolves a false, well, then my future at that point will exit. And I don't have to worry about it because the next time somebody subscribes, it will call start again. But so long as running is true, I will add a value, push it into the stream, returns true, which would cause do well to call this future once again, but then it's going to take one second to resolve. So do well, we'll have to wait until that resolves. See, so, yeah, so I will get a new value every second. So this is all the code we need for our block. So hopefully that makes sense. Now that I have that, let's go over here and I'll make a block here, but for me to create a block. So let's do a counter block. I need a constructor, so let's do my column widget constructor, and I'll say block is equals to counter block, and so that gives me a new object. Okay, so now what do I want to do with it? Let's pass this counter block now to all to these um, my text object here. So let me modify this code and just pass this as a parameter. So instead of taking a string, it will take a block. And that's because I want each one of them to just display the different the current count. So block. So that's what they take. And so if I go down here and I say that I, I have instead a counter block called PLOC. And then I say this that block, right? And so now we have something like that. And if we try to run this code right now, it's not going to work. No. First of all, uh, the variable name must be initialized. Well, that's because it's final. So we need to initialize that with some sort of value. So we can do something like equal default value, something like that. All right. And so now it can work. All right, so let's run our code and see what we get. Now, actually, this is not going to read anything from the counters because even though we pass in a new counter, remember, we need to register for, we have to listen on that stream before anything or start function kicks in. So in here, what we'll do is we will register. So we'll say block that get count. And remember that returns a stream that we can listen on. And we can listen for a count. 
So we listen for the count. Uh, get back. So yeah, my function, my editor is a little bit too helpful. So I'm listening for a count. And what do I want to happen when I have a new count? I want to update or rather set this variable that's being used to create my text box. Remember the text box is created from this variable and it's from whatever is stored in that variable. So I want name to be equals to, let's call it count and let's use single quote. I want it to be called count dollar sign count. Count. All right. So like that. But of course we know this is going to give us an error because name here is finalized. So let's do this. All right. So what do we have? Let's just review. Let's ignore the block. We've looked at it already. We know what it's going to do. You register for it. Once you have a listener, it's going to start spitting out numbers and it will call your call back when you, that you register uh, with this listen function. So we know that we can get a new count value and we're going to create a new string, you know, that says count and whatever that value is here in name. Now, what is name? Name is used to create our text. And so what we should expect is once we create a new stateless widget, at first that stateless widget is going to have some value, whether it's default value or something it might be a race condition, depending on when we start getting count. But what we really like to happen is even if it's a default value at first, that after we get our first count, name is updated and this text widget should go, oh, I see name is updated. Let me repeat myself and show the current count value. That's what we'd like. And to make sure that this is working, what we'll do is we'll call the print here and we'll put name in it. And so um, let's call this the text instead of name. All right, I haven't changed much. And now let's, um, and so, we have this thing called variable text there. We can just return a text. We don't need to center it. So let's just return text to simplify our code a little bit. And this works just as fine because we already say in our column widget that the thing should be aligned along the center. So that's okay. Okay, so let's build this now and see what happens. And there we go. We see default value. But we notice that our callback is calling us with increasing numbers. And we can see that here because we have this text that's updated and we print out the text and it, we see it here. The reason why we're seeing four for each is because, well, we have four of, of these um, my text widgets and each one of them is having the same block and they're getting the same exact value from that block. So here again is that advantages of it of having multiple subscribers to your block where you can send the same information to all of them okay so this is clearly not working this is not what we want what we expect to see is these to say count and colon and whatever the current value is and we expect it to see changing this could have been clock we could have every time we get a tick because this occurs every second we could get the current time and we can make this into a clock on where we display the current time so how would we make that work if we can't change the UI? So this is where our stateful widget comes in. So to write a stateful widget, what we have to do is change it from stateless to stateful. And we do that. Now, what I'll do is let me close this for now. And let me just show you what is happening. For this, I will enter here to create a new widget and then here i'll do class and i'll call this my text widget state and it extends state and it's parameterized on the widget that we want to add state for so notice what i did i created a new widget called a stateful widget and for now i don't have anything in that class and I have a new class here, which is just a regular class. It's not a widget. It's just a state. I extend the state class, but I parameterize it on this. Now, let's go here, click on this, and you'll see that the error message is going to say that we're missing a implementation of create state. So I will say, click this and say create missing method. And what we have to do is override this method here called create state. So let's do it. What does this thing return? Well, if you look at this, it says 
state I want you to when I call create state it should return in an object that is a state object parameterized on stateful widget well what is a stateful widget this is a stateful widget right my text widget is a stateful widget so essentially what we're saying is return an object that's parameterized on state um, the state object that of my text widget but these two values are the exact same so in essence what I'm really returning is an instance of my text widget state right because this is what my text widget state my text widget state is exactly this so that's what I'm returning so all I really need to do here is create an instance of my text widget state and return it well in dart if you have a function that does have one line a single line you can use fat arrow and so you can just simply type the function name and the fat arrow like this which means we do not need this close in parentheses and so oftentimes you will see your stateful widget implemented this way so what is going on what we're saying is we have a stateful widget and it's managed by this state that is essentially what we're saying because when it creates this create state um, method is called it returns an instance of this which is the state and the state knows the widget that we want to manage and so if the state changes and notice all the information about what color and all this other stuff is inside of this state object and so it can decide when to call rebuild to rebuild the text with updated text but we're a little bit ahead of ourselves let's fix a few of these errors so for example my text widget which is this is incorrect by the way um, this should be underscore state right this is what it is and it takes a block and color let's say and what we can do is we can still make right now our text widget is a stateful widget and it does not have any of these parameters but we can fix that very easily by going here and say my text widget still takes those things so this that block comma and then optionally a color this that color there's nothing wrong it's still a widget so we can do all the same thing as we did before so all we need to do now is say that we are final for example block counter block uh, if I can only type counter block and we have final color color and once we have that notice now this is no longer an error because it takes those two one required parameter and a name optional parameter and so everything is good again so our run app function is happy because it has a valid widget which just happens to be a stateless widget or stateless widget uses this my column widget which is you know a stateful widget well sorry um use my column widget and my column widgets uses these my text widgets which happens to just be stateful widget but they're still widgets okay now let's focus on this state now because we are our um, state requires some parameters here they are we can pass those in from our stateless widget when we create the state St stateful widget when we create the state sorry so we can pass in the block and the color okay now we can say that though since we always pass it in every time we create a state for this widget we always pass in those two parameters so why make the second one optional let's just make it a required parameter like that now what you're seeing here is this says that my text widget is not a subtype of stateless widget the reason why we send that message is because our code needs to refresh so let's stop it and rebuild it completely because it's still using stale code where it taught that our my text widget was a stateless widget all right great so now we're seeing our widget again and so that means our stateful widget is working but here's the problem let's open up our little terminal at the bottom here and debug and we can see that we're still getting count so that's good that we're still getting count but our ui is not updated but remember what i said when the state changes this is managing state it should tell the flutter framework that it needs to rebuild the ui and so far even though we're changing the state 
or information contained by this widget that's managing our stateful widget here, when there's nothing that says, how should Flutter then know that oh, we have just updated text and it should rebuild the widget, right? So we need a way to tell Flutter that yes, go ahead and rebuild this widget after we make some changes. And for that, the state provided, the state class provided a function for us to call called set state. So, so what it's really doing now, it says this. Each time we get an update from the stream, we should be able to update our state, which is what we're doing here. So we should do that inside of this set state. And now, after we call set state with a function that does all our update, set state knows that it should notify Flutter upon the completion of running our function that updates our state to say rebuild the UI. And that is what's gonna happen. So let's refresh now our code because I still think we have some stale code. And as you can see, at first it says default value, but notice what's happening now. As we get new values, our UI is getting updated. So we can easily turn this now into a clock because we understand how to update our UI. The mystery that we was missing or the piece of key thing that we was missing was right here. We needed to be able to call set state so that uh, we can make our changes within a function. And so because we call set state with the function that makes the changes, after it complete making the updates on changing our state, which is this value, now set state is going to tell Flutter, we don't see it, but basically tell Flutter to rebuild the text box. And because it tells Flutter to rebuild the text box, well, our text box uses this value, which we have updated already. So now it can rebuild with a new value. And there we see the value updated. And the only place that we have set state is within a state. And we tie a state to the stateful widget. And so that is the whole complete thing. Now, I would challenge you to just turn this into a clock. It's very easy. When you get call, you, you leave everything in place. Remember, you're getting call every second. So now when you get call, instead of your text being count and the count number, just ignore count and simply get the current time, format it as a time, and then set text to that value. And there you have it. You will have updated the, the um, you have a, a clock, a very simple clock. So that's a to do for you. Notice that we still have the ability to set whatever color we want. So we can say um, color. This is a name parameter. And we can say colors that purple, if we like. We can make this color that colors that um, amber, yeah, whatever that is. And we save that. And so we should see that our, our update is going to change. If it doesn't change, well, then we just do a quick refresh. And then there you go. Each one of our widget can display the count in a different color. And of course, if we want the, to increase the size, we can change this to like 32. And once that's save and update, this should just come up to 32 font. And there you go, much bigger. So very, very easy. And now since this is working, we can take this out or comment it because we probably don't want to see all these values keep repeating at the bottom here. And let's refresh so that we don't have to deal with that. And there you go. We started our count and there you go. All right. So that's all for that, the code. So hopefully the code is straightforward. It will be in the Git repository, all of it. Now let's go take a look at the slide that I promised to try and see if we can understand what's going on. So let's talk about how UI is updated. And this is just for illustration purposes only. As we go through and continue to learn more about Flutter, we're gonna correct some of the things that we're gonna state here. So remember what happens when you start a Flutter application. It goes to the main function. And as we know, main calls our run app function, which we get from the Flutter SDK. RunHap creates a widget tree. How do we know that? Because we give it a widget to represent our application. And that widget in this case was my column text widget. My column text widget uses a column widget which was provided by the Flutter SDK. Column widget has a few children. 
and those children are each my text widget, which are the widgets that we wrote. Our widget in turn uses the text widget. Now at this point, we can consider the tree complete and Flutter the framework has enough information to say, okay, I finish exploding all these widgets. There's nothing else to do. And so now it can start rendering. Now, what does this mean? Well, for a text widget, it means that oh, since they have a parent, which is the my text widget, that parent dictate their size and color and what they display and everything. My text widget is also a child of column widget. And so it has to share the column widget space with its sibling, but the column widget decides that and tell each widget of its child how big they should be. And then up and up it goes. Okay, so this is, you can think of a representation of the widget tree for um, stateless widgets. Let's focus now on just the widget tree. Now we understand that how it get created by run app and all this other stuff. We don't need to look at that anymore. And so now what I want to add to this is what happened when we have stateful widget. And when we had stateful widget, remember the only thing we did was we still had a widget, which called it a stateful widget, but then we had this second object called the state. And the state was used to sort of manage that widget. The state is where updates happen and the state says when that widget needs to be repainted. Hopefully, if you use these two diagrams, you can understand how is it that the UI get updated. When it's not a, when it's just a stateless widget, it just gets exploded and that, that's it. Nothing gets updated after that point. You have to rebuild the entire widget. You want to represent something else. When you have stateful widgets, because your state, and if we could imagine a little state box there being triggered by your block on the side, you know, making changes to that state. Now you can see that how the state gets updated and then it tells the Flutter framework to, you know what, go back and rebuild this my text widget for me. And my text widget, because it is implemented using a text widget, gives my tech, give the text widget new information for it to build itself. Hopefully this makes sense. Okay. I don't want to make this video any longer than it is. Um, hopefully this makes sense. In the other video, we'll continue trying to learn the basics of Flutter. Um, take care. Have a great rest of, rest of day and thanks. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. Bye.